Hello, my name is Jay, and today we're going to take a look at the X470 and B450 chipsets that will be coming out next April. We're going to be going over what they're going to improve on in the X370 and B350 chipsets, and of course these motherboards will hopefully have some better improvement and you know we'll get into it I guess so the first thing I want to say is these are all kind of speculation ish but these are mostly backed by facts um, this is kind of stuff that's been taken from various places on the internet from slides that AMD has said um, some things that they have posted about on their Twitter things like that So this is kind of a wide range of everything that they have said that this chipset will have and if you're watching this you can you know at a later time you can always compare see what actually you know happens and of course you know which actually is true so the first thing they've promised is that these motherboards will have a lower power consumption. This means that overall you'll have, of course, we'll get into more of why that is, but there's a lower power consumption on these motherboards um, either, you know, from your whole system, if you, you ha you'll have a lot less power usage than, you know, this, this smaller or the older motherboard compared to the new motherboard. So the, as I said, the launch date is April 2018, and of course with AMD and all these other, you know, developers or, or people that are you know, developing hardware and stuff it always can be out and moved out and farther but they've said April so we're going to go on the bet that it's April and that's directly what they've said so another point they made is that the cross compatible um, they're going to basically all these new motherboards are going to be cross compatible with the 1000 series Ryzen processors or the Ryzen 1 processors so basically you're going to have ability to take a 470 motherboard and X470 motherboard and throw it in with a um, 1800X or something. So it basically means that you've got a lot more ability, customized. I guess you get yeah a lot of options. Now what I really don't notice is like obviously the price is going to be of these chips and this isn't the motherboard. These chips are going to be around 350 bucks for the top tier. So I mean that compares with the Ryzen right now and of course Intel's highest model. So I feel like overall it doesn't appear to be something you know really worth that I guess is that the right word to put it but um, the other thing is there's going to be better CPU VRMs and power delivery to the CPU so that basically means that overclocking will be better um, RAM VRMs and uh, modules and stuff are going to have better overclocking as well and you know that's basically going to mean that we can get overclocked to RAM I'd really like to see RAM actually at 3200 megahertz like consistently and stable and I also think that we could even get up to higher especially because Ryzen on that Infinity Fabric runs you know that uses that RAM and it's extremely important especially the speed of it so that's why I think that would be a good thing to see and so hopefully that will even mean we get boosted specs on the 2700X and those boosted chipsets or boosted chips for the Ryzen 2 series so the next thing is the faster chipset there's going to be a faster chipset in these new motherboards now you're like well what does that mean well it means that USB connections will get faster of course all that throughput that has to go through um, connect it to the CPU motherboard you've got a very very nice um, chipset that will hopefully make that faster make those connections much faster and basically you know I guess make things as I said faster so the other thing I would also see thing in there and this is not what has been said that is all those are all the things that are said and I'm going to imply some things here if we're getting a faster chipset and USB speed is improving that most likely means that the other various assets on uh, various parts of the um, motherboard will also be improving with the faster chipset. It's not just limited to USB, but we could definitely see a couple things in the PCIe lanes um, as better go through the motherboard or go through the chipset. Things that go through the chipset will definitely get faster and maybe more, you know, the USB connections for sure. There's a lot of things that we can see, and of course, maybe those integrated graphics money we can get a little bit tweaked better. Um, just because, you know, if we got an integrated graphics chip, that's what's running through the chipset, things like that. So I definitely could see that um, in some situations being another way to, that would improve the motherboard. And honestly, I think that if what they mean by improved memory controllers hopefully means that we start we have the ability to stay stable at 3,200 megahertz. I mean, right now, the, I have a system that's running um, 3,000 megahertz. I feel like 3,200 megahertz is probably the top line that any person can get for right now for Ryzen. I'd love to see that at like 4,000 or something. I feel like that would be... Really, that'd be an example of improved. And I think the overclocking, look at these um, chips and looking at, you know, the base clocks and the boost clocks, um, what we're supposed to see in the two se Ryzen 2 series, I feel like this is hopefully going to mean a lot in overclocking and getting it up close to Intel. Let's be honest, AMD has really not had anything 
too high up in the 4 gigahertz land. And we're hopefully going to see something around 4.3 for the top tier Ryzen chip. Which, if you think about Intel, you know, the 7700K was 4.5, I think, gigahertz boost. So, I mean, I feel like we're getting close up there into the same speeds that Intel was a generation ago. And obviously AMD has more to offer in core-wise and productivity. But if you think in mind, a 7700K is still very relevant today. And, you know, you could definitely game on it, no problem. So I really would like to see some a point where AMD has the same, you know, clock speeds close to Intel, or at least maybe branch off. Because I know the cores is really hard to develop something with higher cores or clock speed and many cores. But I feel like they could branch off something into like a four core or eight thread CPU and have the ability to have that really high clock speed that would be able to combat Intel's. And especially with this um, 2600X that's supposed to come out, we're definitely going to start seeing something that's really comparable to what Intel 8700K was. And I mean, if you're, that's like almost as good as it gets because that's getting dangerously close to something that's much cheaper for a much better price. So, hope you enjoyed this video. And I know I got into a rant on the chipsets and stuff, but I feel like uh, the, the actual chips themselves. But it's something that you got to keep in mind as well is that these motherboards. It will support both. B, I think it will be better to get the, if you're doing gaming, of course, get the layer um, CPUs. And um, I guess, and of course, if you're really, really itching for those mini cores for something cheaper, you could always just, you know, get an older chip one, or Ryzen 1 chip. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, I'm sorry. And of course, stick around and uh, check out my other uh, videos for other cool tech related things. Thank you. Good.